welcome back to the Crossboard Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, your host. And today we have uh, a great musician, great blues musician from here in Canada, who is currently on tour and he just made a stop here in the city of Calgary just recently, but he's still on tour. David Gogo. David, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. My pleasure. So I, I got to start with the first question I have. I've asked every single musician on the show. What does music mean to you? Well, I was talking about that on stage the other day, and um, I, I once had a conversation with Tom Wilson, um, he of the Blackie and the Rodeo Kings and Lee Harvey Osmond and Junkhouse. And he looked at me and he said, go, go, you're like me. We're lifers. Like, we have no choice. We have to do this. And I guess he gets asked sometimes to speak at Humber College or whatever, and he just says to them, if you don't have to do this, you should probably do something else, you know. <laughs> But some of us, it's just instilled that you can't start it like a car. You can't stop it with a pistol. You know, if this is just what we do. And so it's, why it's been, do you it, oh, continue it's, on? It's, it, it's, it, it, you know, it's every part of my life. You know, it's just um, from the time I get up till the time I go to sleep. You know, and then I, I'm thinking about music all the time, and I'm thinking about the great musicians from the past. So yeah, it's just it's what I do. Uh, you have been in the industry for some time now, and you have seen the changes that have happened throughout the industry. Has it been to the benefit of our society for the uh, the music industry to change the way it has through online streaming of artists now being more active on social media or uh, it, has it been a downside because it has, we have seen sort of a, uh, 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 a decline of people going to new music because they don't go to the music stores. They don't go to the record stores and pick out the new music that's just been released. In your opinion, how does the music industry look in 2021? Well, there's pros and cons. I um, actually interviewed Mr. Bill Henderson the other day. So he's a guy that can talk from, you know, over 50 years experience in the business. And we're both a little perplexed at things like streaming and that just in terms of trying to monetize it. You know, it costs money to make an album. How do you make that money back? Um, but there's a lot of good things, like you mentioned, like, like the social media thing where, where artists can be in touch with their audience, closer in touch. And I think it depends on the genre. Like with my new album, we just went out and did 12 shows and we sold a whack of CDs. And that's because, A, I think the demographic, like the age group I play for, they still like to physically have either vinyl or a CD. And also, it's like a memento of the evening. Um, I try to make myself available as soon as possible after the show with Sharpie in hand and uh, meet the folks and, and sign the album. Um, you know, so I, I kind of... Oh, go ahead and continue. Sorry. Yeah, I, I kind of went in. I went indie early, you know, like uh, in a way. I've been with the same rec record company, uh, Cordova Bay, for 15 albums now starting with a licensing deal. I did one record with EMI Music Canada and we just did not see... Uh, I to EMI at all, you know, and um, and that's back when record companies actually had money to spend and they had some clout. That's all changed now. So it's, it's nice. It's nice that I've started early in, in being with a little kind of a mom and pop organization. So let's talk about that new album, which is Silver Cup, that was just re uh, released earlier this year, if I'm not mistaken, or this year in 2021. If I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, this was uh, this album came out of the pandemic. You uh sat down and made this album through this whole uh, world pandemic that we are currently in, correct? Well, it kind of, it's, it's only been out for like a week and a half. It, oh. it officially came out, yeah, it officially came out on October 8th. I recorded it in June with my friend, Steve Mariner. So Mariner came out to my house and stayed for two weeks. He So he um, engineered and produced the album. Plus he played guitar, bass, piano, harmonica, a couple of drums and I like I like to joke I made sandwiches um because <laughs> I I've never been home this much in my life so I just started writing I just wanted my big thing was to stay creative because it was a kick in the gut you know when it first happened and I was due to have probably my best year ever in 2020 and in, uh, in terms of touring and and Mariner and I were going to make a record together like a duo album and he had a, a wicked tour set up and then just everything went up in smoke so <laughs> That was that was devastating, but I just decided, you know, I got to stay creative. So I just started writing and writing and writing. And um, but the one thing I promised myself was I wasn't going to write any songs about the pandemic. Um, it's been done. It was being done. I don't want to celebrate the pandemic at all. I hate it. Um, so there's going to be no lockdown blues or keep your distance or songs like that. I just said, no, I'm going to write, you know, write, write about what I write about. But that being said, I, I wrote some songs that were a little bit of a left turn for me. 
stylistically. Um, like the title track, Silver Cup, is kind of like a slice of Canadiana that relates to my um, family history. And another song, Silver Cup, or sorry, uh, uh, Top Shelf, that's at the end of the album is about the passing of a friend that I've known for a long time. And which, you know, as you live life, you know, you kind of all these more experiences that you have, you know, you, you have more material to draw from. So, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of the pandemic, it, it gave me more time to concentrate on the song. So I wasn't had I didn't have the pressure of having to be out the road and and, and then get home. And, you, and you know, you've only got three days at home and you're trying to squeeze these songs out. You know, I had time to work on them. I want to talk about one song in particular right now, and that's never going to change. I have uh, been blaring that uh, all weekend, all morning, because I have found it a catchy tune. It is one of those ones that I can start humming along to myself and singing in the shower and start humming the tune in the shower. Where does the song come from? Because I, I have connect, I've like it has been embedded in my brain, and I am I'm finding myself going back to it every morning. Where does the song come from? Well, it's, it's a strange story. Uh, we actually, for this last tour, we opened the, we opened the night with that song because it kind of grabs people right away. That's a song, I was in Nashville about 15 years ago, maybe. And I was going to get together with a guy, Tom Hambridge, to, to write a song. And at the time, I'd been doing a lot of touring with Johnny Winter, and he was about to produce an album for Johnny. So he said, tell me about Johnny. Tell me about what, you know, what he's like as a person, and we'll write a song for him, and hopefully he'll record it. So you know, we, that's what we did. But for whatever, for whatever reason, Johnny did not record the song. But then a few years went by and Tom got a hold of me and said, hey, listen, I'm in the studio with Buddy Guy. And we're they're looking for a material. And we just recorded that song and, and it's going to make the record. So it's on a Buddy Guy album called Rhythm and Blues. So that was one of the highlights of my career. You know, Buddy's always been a, a musical hero of mine. So to hear him sing the song that I'd helped write and, and you know, see my name on the album was great. So when it came time for my new record, I thought, oh, maybe we should look for a cover tune or so. And then I was just listening to records at home and I listened to that. And I went, hey, I should do that song. So the, the Buddy Guy version is, is very much electric, you know, with his band. But we've done it on 12 string acoustic guitars and just uh, kicking the floor for percussion. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a fun song to play live. I don't know why it's taking me this long to do it. <laughs> Now, I got to ask the question because I, 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 I want to make sure I've never asked this question to an artist before. So I apologize if it comes off a little weird, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Is it hard to cover a song that you you've connected with before? Because you talk about Buddy Guy doing this song and then you have covered it. Is it hard to cover a song like that to say, OK, I'm going to do it and hopefully I don't screw it up to the point where Buddy Guy would call me up or someone would call me up and say, why'd you do it? Because it's not the way the original one and yours isn't as good. Or is it easy? Well, the fact that I co-wrote this one gives yeah. me a little bit of carte blanche. But, um, <laughs> That's true, but still. Well, the only other cover song on, on, on my new album is the Bob Dylan song, it Takes a Lot to Laugh, It Takes a Train to Cry. Now, anytime you're going to do a Bob Dylan song, you have to realize that probably 40 other people have covered that same song. And that's one thing about Spotify and things like that is you can just go through and, and check out the, the covers that people have done. And so my favorite two versions were the original Dylan version and there's one Leon Russell version. So I kind of listened to both of those and tried to take the best of what they did and then thought, hey, what can we bring to this to make it a little different? So, it's, you know, so people wouldn't rather just, yeah, just go, well, why don't I just listen to Bob Dylan sing the thing, you know? And I've always done that with my cover songs. I mean, I even covered a Michael Jackson song, The Way You Make Me Feel, but it, which, you know, essentially to me, that song is a blues shuffle. So that's what I try to get down to what the core of the song is and find the essence of that and try to, you know, if there's any blues in it, I try to bring that out. So yeah, you don't want to just do it like a karaoke version. That drives me nuts when people will cover, like, you know, even when a, the Wallflowers, which I think are a good band, but they did Heroes by David Bowie. Well, it's the exact backing track almost just with Jake Dylan's voice on. So that kind of, I don't see the point of that. So thank you. Yeah, I try to bring something new to it. And you did. Well, and I thank you for answering that question. I just say I've never had the ability to ask that question. And I thought, well, I should ask it now because you've talked about it. Um, I want to turn to your recent tour because uh, you just said you're off of 12 uh, uh, look, uh, stops uh, with Steve, uh, one being here in the city of Calgary, which I'm located at the I just want to make sure I get the name of the Ironwood Bar and Grill. How was yep. it? How was it during doing a, a semi tour during a pandemic? Well, it was 
great in, in, in many ways. I mean, number one, the audience, you know, the audience, was, they've been champing at the bit to hear live music get out. So everyone was so appreciative that we were actually out there. And for us just to get out and do what we've always done, it felt so fantastic. Um, it, it was, you know, you forget about, you know, there's a lot of work, especially the way Steve Mariner had booked the, booked the tour. And, you know, we, we were doing um, six nights in a row and, and went with one day off and then another six nights, sometimes two shows a night. And you just forget about, you know, that part of it, like the actual work part and the driving and all that. But it was fantastic. And, you know, we had good weather and, and we had one drive day where we got to stop at some of the kooky places. I like to stop when, I'm, when I have time on the road. And Steve and, and we had a buddy, Scotty, was out doing uh, merch for us. And uh, so I was kind of their tour guide through BC. So that was great. But um, yeah, I mean, this, you know, we did online things and live streams during the, the, the pandemic. That at, at first was okay and definitely necessary financially. But then the shine kind of went off that. So to get in front of actual people again is great, especially the kind of show that we were doing on this tour, because I recognized that things are going to be slow opening and, and limited capacity. So it's hard to drag an entire band out. So I wanted to have an album that I could tour either just solo or maybe me and one other person. So, you know, an acoustic based show and a big part of the acoustic based show is the interaction with the audience and, and um, us introducing the songs, telling the story, stories behind the songs. And that's hard to do uh, on a live stream. So to have the actual reaction of the people um, was fantastic. And all the gigs went great. In fact, we played the Ironwood on Saturday night, and then we added a, a matinee on the Sunday. So that was a nice way to end the tour because some kids could get in and we could do some visiting with friends and family and stuff. One of the big uh, unknowns that we are currently facing is the fourth wave of the pandemic. Are we going to be going into a fifth wave? Um, but now that you've been out on the road, you have been touring. Is it? Uh, do you have the itch to go back out there again, or are you still taking it cautiously during this whole unknown situation that we are currently in with the pandemic? Well, we were very cautious, and all the venues were very cautious. And there's um, definitely you know protocols that were being followed. I think a big thing is is having the passport. If you don't have the passport, you don't get in. So that makes it safer for the people of us that have been vaccinated. We don't have to worry about someone coming in with the potential of catching it from them because they choose not to get the vaccine. Um, but still, I mean, it was hanging over our heads the whole tour. Like like when we first started, even we had a, an email from our publicist and he was worried because he'd heard that Alberta was going to have another you know outbreak. And you know, you think three or the, or actually four of the 12 shows were in Alberta. So, I mean, that, that could be a real hit for us financially. Um, we only had a problem with one show and that was a small town in Alberta and they had sold out the show, but then realized once that the Alberta government had just decided that you have to have the, the passport, all of a sudden the show almost got canceled because half the people don't have the passport in that town because that's just kind of way that town is. So they moved it to a different venue and you know, it still went over great, but yeah, you never know. Like you, you could plan then. And that's what's the most difficult thing right now. Like, like when my record was, you know, had the potential, okay, we're going to release it October 8th. I should start working on some November shows in Ontario and Quebec, but back in September, it was hard to do because they weren't sure if they were going to be allowed to be open. And if so, maybe they could only have 40 people. It's hard to fly all the way out to Ontario and play for small crowds like that and make it feasible. So we just we just do what we do and we wear our masks and we try to, you know, take care of business that way. And was it fun to have that interaction with the audience again to be back in front of people? Because like you said earlier on, having those live streams on Facebook are, are great. There are ways to make money for some artists and there are ways to be financial uh, resources for artists. But to be back in front of the people, that must have brought you some uh, a little bit more joy than normal, because uh, I can imagine as an artist, you, you feed off the audience and feeding off of a computer screen is not always the best. Like myself right now, feeding off a computer screen is not always the best, but being an artist playing in front of just a computer screen and seeing just a thumb or a little heart emoji is probably not the best compared to an actual live audience, is it? No, absolutely. And, and, you know, like there's some songs like with, with the tour we just did every night, it's a little different. We um, we have a bit of a set list, but sometimes we'll just pull out a, a different song just to, you know, to do something new. So so say if Mariner pulls out a, a new a new song and he asks me to take a solo and I rip off a good solo, 
well, the audience responds. They, they applaud after the solo, you know, even while the song's going on. And that makes you, makes you feel good. And you don't get that with the computer. You don't get that interaction. And as I mentioned earlier, just um, stories in between songs. It's, it's hard, difficult to tell a story to a computer screen. Um, but with the audience, you know, you get them either laughing or clapping or whatever. So, yeah, it was, it was just fabulous to do it again. So you have 12 uh, tour dates under your belt now. Uh, what's next? Uh, are you and Steve just taking a few days off, getting back out on the road here next month? Or are you heading off to Ontario because you were talking about doing Ontario and Quebec shows? Or is that sort of on hold because of the pandemic? What's next for Steve and uh, David? Well, Steve is now taking off. He's going to be here actually tomorrow. Just he's taking a little short vacation with this lady driving through BC and they're going to end up at my place tomorrow. But then he's off with Colin James. So he's gone for most of November with Colin James. So I've got some shows on Vancouver Island, um, either just myself or with the acoustic bass player that I work with out here, Marisha. She's a fabulous upright bass player. So we've got some BC dates through November, although it looks like I may be flying to Ottawa at the end of November, I got to check today and make sure that everything's still, you know, scook them there. And I'll actually be playing with my Ottawa band. So I haven't seen those guys in almost two years because um, it's it's just been that long with the pandemic. So, you know, even if I just go in for a weekend, that'll be great. Uh, December is usually I'm hanging around at home because my family has a Christmas tree farm. So I help out with that. But Steve and I are talking about trying to bring this tour to Ontario and Quebec in May, possibly, because um, that's the only time our schedules will both allow it. So, yeah, we're just trying to, you know, do what we can while we can. And hopefully um, there isn't another wave and, and we can just, you know, things will start to return to normal by early next year. And just uh, just talking about early next year, you've released your album in early October because this is airing in November what what can we expect any any uh any hints of what the next single is going to be any hints on what we can expect to be hearing over the next few months or should people just go out and download the whole thing and buy it and listen to the whole thing because i've listened to the whole thing and i can tell you that it's an amazing album put together and i appreciate you putting it together because like i said i've been humming that one song over and over again for the last few days to the detriment of my family <laughs> Yeah, no, we're just going to be basically this, this record's a brand new record, so I'm going to ride this record as long as I can. And, you know, so far the reviews have been fantastic and uh, the response is fantastic. You know, it debuted on at number two at the CKUA charts in Alberta and then debuted at number three in the Roots Music Report Canadian album. So that's a, that's a great start. And um, yeah, it's, it's difficult for me to pick different songs to put out there because it's not you know, being an acoustic record, it doesn't really have the potential of, of you know, commercial FM play or anything. But I know a lot of the, the community stations and, and university stations will be will be playing it. Um, yeah, so I'm just I'm just going to enjoy it while I can and just kind of ride that wave as long as, as, as it'll take me. We are always releasing new episodes and from time to time, new specials of the Cross Border Interview podcast. Be sure to hit the subscribe button wherever you are getting your favorite podcast so you never miss an episode. But also, be sure to head over to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and give us a follow. We have behind-the-scenes looks at upcoming guests, upcoming episodes, and some special social media-only content. Subscribe to the show now. And now, let's get back to our episode. So I got to ask the question about that because you just brought up a good point. How hard is it to choose the songs that go on an album like this? Because I can imagine when you write a song or you record a song, they're they're all your children. They're, they 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 all have special meaning to you. But when you release an album like this, you have to choose 10, 15 songs to put out. So how hard is it to look at an album and say, okay, what song needs to go on? What song doesn't need to go on? Because you all, they all have special meanings to you. For So for you, how hard is it to pick those songs? Well, because I had more time <clears throat> with this record, I had done demo demo tapes of, uh, of most of these songs. And so I was able to write them, do the demo recording, and then go back maybe a month later and have a listen. And sometimes something you thought was great, a month later you listen to it and you go, actually, you know what, that wasn't that great. Uh, so between that process and then having Steve Mariner as the producer, that you know helps as well because he goes hey man this song is you know he might even say this song is better than you think we should put this one up right up front you know so yeah it's, it's hard to step back from it sometimes and and get uh, an honest self-opinion in fresh years but um 
you know, having a producer helps for sure. Um, before we go, I have one last question for you, and I've asked this to every musician. How can fans get in, uh, get in touch with you if they want to uh, stream your music, download your music, buy an album from you? How can they do that? Well, all the social media stuff I do myself, which people like, because they can kind of, you know, they can tell it's me, they can tell it's not just a, a bot or, you know, someone we've hired, you know, an intern or something. And, it, 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 and, I, and I do everything individually. Like I do my Facebook music page. That's one post. My Instagram is a different post. My Twitter is a different post. I don't just press the button, the one, you know, I hate that when you're on Twitter and it says, David Gogo just posted to Instagram. Well, I'm not on Instagram, dude. <laughs> you know, to tw- put something on Twitter. But as far as listening to music, we're on all platforms. So if you want to buy the physical album, just go to davidgogo.com, go to my website, and uh, you'll get it lickety split, the actual physical copy. And we're hoping to have vinyl soon. They, they, they're, 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 they're blaming COVID that they can't get the materials. We were supposed to have vinyl November 7th, and, and now they're pushing it back a few months. So anyways, fingers crossed. But also streaming, we're on Spotify and Apple and iTunes and, you know, you name it, we're, we're there. Uh, well, once the once the vinyl does come out, I will be buying it for sure because I am a vinyl fan. I, I think vinyl is the way of the future, and unfortunately, I have to say that in nineteen in twenty twenty one, vinyl is the way of the future. I love it. I love the sound of vinyl. So I will be looking forward to Silver Cup when it comes out on vinyl. Um, David, thank you for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure. And uh, for my listeners, you know my go to statement: the links to David's. Uh, Social media are in the show notes and his website. So go check him out. David, thank you. Thank you very much.